Congratulations on being selected for training as a powered industrial truck operator. Powered industrial trucks include fork trucks, tractors, platform lift trucks, motorized hand trucks, and other specialized industrial trucks powered by electric motors or internal combustion engines. Your training will consist of a combination of formal and practical training and culminate in an evaluation of your knowledge and skills. This video presentation is part of your formal training. Formal training can be a combination of classroom lecture, open discussion, written materials, video presentations, and even computer-based lessons. Upon arrival at your worksite, your client representative will conduct demonstrations and talent trainees will take part in hands-on exercises. The evaluation portion of your training will ensure that you have both the knowledge and skills necessary to operate a powered industrial truck safely. As a talent trainee, you may operate a powered industrial truck only under the direct supervision of someone who has the knowledge, training, and experience to train powered industrial truck operators and evaluate their performance. This must be done where it does not endanger you or other employees. When you successfully complete the training, Ronstadt will maintain a permanent record for each talent who successfully completes classroom portions and practical portions of powered industrial truck training. At least once every three years, powered industrial truck operators will be re-evaluated to make sure that they still have the knowledge and skills to operate a powered industrial truck safely. The person conducting the evaluation will first observe the powered industrial truck operator during normal operations to determine if the operator is performing safely. And second, ask pertinent questions to ensure that the operator has the appropriate knowledge or experience needed to operate a truck safely. Refresher training in relevant topics is provided when an evaluation reveals that he or she is not operating the truck safely or any time when an operator has been observed operating in an unsafe manner, an operator has been involved in an accident or near-miss incident, an operator is assigned to drive a different type of powered industrial truck, or a condition in the workplace changes in a manner that could affect safe operation of the truck. OSHA requires that all powered industrial truck operators receive training in three broad areas truck-related topics, work-related topics, and other OSHA requirements. The truck-related topics section will cover general information regarding powered industrial truck operation. The work-related topics section will cover site-specific information about powered industrial truck operations in your specific workplace. The OSHA requirements section will cover OSHA Standard 1910.178 powered industrial trucks as it pertains to operators. The first and third topics will be covered in this video and in practical exercises. The second topic, which is specific to the worksite to which you are assigned, is best covered by the client representative at your worksite. As we said at the beginning, training has two parts. First, classroom type training using written material video presentations, or computer-based training, and second, practical, hands-on training, which you will receive at the client worksite. So, let's get started. In this section, Truck-Related Topics, we will review topics that pertain specifically to powered industrial trucks. As in other sections, we will discuss general concepts and principles, operating instructions, warnings, and precautions for your specific type of powered industrial truck will be reviewed during training at your worksite. This information can also be found in the operator's manual for your powered industrial truck. If you have no experience with them, powered industrial trucks may seem as easy to operate as an automobile. However, there are some important differences between a powered industrial truck and an auto. One of the most important differences to understand is the suspension. In automobiles, we have a complex four-point suspension built for stability and comfort. 
This is not so on a powered industrial truck. Powered industrial trucks have a simple three-point suspension built for maneuvering in tight spaces with heavy loads. This three-point suspension is the basis for the stability triangle that will be discussed later in this section. While automobiles are loaded with safety devices and equipment to protect us in the event of an accident, powered industrial trucks are equipped only with minimal safety devices. No airbags, crumple zones, or sophisticated traction control systems here. Most powered industrial trucks are only equipped with a seat belt and an overhead guard to protect the operator. Another significant difference between a forklift truck and an automobile is weight. Most powered industrial trucks are much heavier than a typical automobile. It is probably safe to say that all powered industrial trucks are capable of hauling more weight than any automobile. Most autos are heavier in the front due to positioning of the engine. Most powered industrial trucks have a counterweight positioned on the rear of the truck to help balance the load on the front of the truck. Speaking of the rear of the truck, that is where the steering is located on forklifts and most other powered industrial trucks. Unlike cars, which steer using the front tires, the powered industrial truck uses the rear tires to steer. Powered industrial trucks generally have a much tighter turning radius than cars so that they can get in and out of tight spaces. With the ability to make a very sharp turn comes the increased hazard of overturning at higher speeds. Powered industrial trucks were intended for long hours of use at very low speeds. Autos are meant for much higher speeds, which is part of the reason that they have a more complex four-point suspension, a myriad of safety devices, and a wider turning radius. Another important difference between a powered industrial truck and a car is the tires. Cars generally have tires designed for a comfortable ride and good traction across a variety of surface conditions. Powered industrial truck tires are typically tailored specifically to one surface condition. Unlike auto tires, which have to be inflated, the most common powered industrial truck tires, used indoors in warehouses, are solid. Having solid tires means that every little flaw in the working surface gets transmitted through the truck and can make the load unstable. Some powered industrial truck tires used on rough surfaces will have heavy-duty inflatable tires. Stability, handling, and safe load handling of these trucks are dependent on the tire's proper inflation. This means tire pressure checks should be a part of the pre-use inspection for this type of truck. Powered industrial trucks aren't designed for passengers either. It is an OSHA violation and against Ronstadt company policy for any person other than the operator to ride on any powered industrial truck. Powered industrial trucks can vary quite a bit in the type, number, and placement of controls and instrumentation. The operator's manual for your powered industrial truck and the client representative at your worksite can provide specifics for your powered industrial truck. In order to operate safely, you, at the very least, need to know the location and safe operation of the steering wheel, mass tilt control for forklifts, fork or attachment controls, horn, mirrors where applicable, lights and signals where applicable, gear control, brakes, accelerator pedal, and applicable instrumentation. Powered industrial trucks vary in their power sources. They can be powered in several ways, including liquefied petroleum or LP gas, which may also be called LPG or propane, gasoline, diesel fuel, and electricity from a battery. Refueling and recharging are an important part of your safety and performance training for your powered industrial truck. We'll touch on this important topic a bit later in this video and it will be covered in detail at your worksite. Steering and maneuvering a powered industrial truck safely requires patience and finesse. Don't get in a hurry. Just like an automobile, driving a powered industrial truck too fast can get you killed or seriously injured. 
The powered industrial truck itself should be operated at a low speed, especially when turning. It is capable of very sharp turns. Turning safely requires a slow speed and smooth steering motion. Avoid quick movements with a powered industrial truck, especially when loaded. Visibility is critical to safe operation. If operating in low light conditions, the use of powered industrial truck mounted lights, where equipped, is strongly recommended. An operator must keep a clear view of the direction of travel at all times. If you are lifting a load that blocks your view, then you are required to travel in reverse with the load behind you so that you can maintain your view in the direction of travel. Never elevate a load just so you can see under it for traveling. Whenever possible, keep load heights low enough so you can see over them when traveling in the forward or normal position. Be wary of pedestrians, especially in a crowded work environment. Pedestrians can appear out of nowhere. For this reason, slow down and sound your horn at intersections, doorways, and other areas where vision is obstructed. When approaching someone, sound your horn and look for them to acknowledge your presence before passing them. If they do not acknowledge you, be extra careful as you pass them in case they step out in front of you. When backing, be sure to look over both shoulders and sound the horn prior to moving. If your powered industrial truck is equipped with mirrors, keep them clean and properly adjusted. If you are lucky enough to operate a powered industrial truck that is equipped with windows around the operator's cab, keep them clean and report any damage. We're all familiar with the typical forklift, one-person vehicle with a counterweight on one end and mast and forks on the other. You can see them in operation every day of the week at big box building supply stores across the country. But OSHA's standards cover more than just forklifts, so they use the term powered industrial trucks to apply to a wide variety of types of material handling machines. They can be loosely classified by how and where the operator interfaces or relates to the machine in operation and how, where, and with what the machine interfaces with or handles its load. Probably the simplest powered industrial truck is not something many of us would call a truck at all. The powered pallet jack, also called a motorized hand truck. These machines utilize forks to slip into and lift pallets of materials, but the operator walks with instead of rides on the machine. Because it handles pallets, it belongs to a broad group of powered industrial trucks known as pallet trucks. An electric motor provides the traveling power, and most powered pallet jacks utilize hydraulic systems to lift and lower the load. This class of powered industrial truck is also known as a pedestrian machine because the operator walks. First cousin to the powered pallet jack is a machine called a walkie rider. Configured very much like the powered pallet jack, walkie riders provide a platform for the operator to stand on while the machine travels. The machine can also be used as a pedestrian machine if desired by the operator. The walkie rider is well suited for order picking in a large facility, where frequent stops are necessary to pull orders from numerous places. It's much easier to simply step on and off of the platform than to climb into and out of a forklift seat frequently. And the operator can work more quickly and with less fatigue by riding between stops. Controls are on the handle and are utilized the same whether the operator walks or rides on the machine. A standard pallet jack or walkie rider has a limited lift distance, usually only enough so a normal wooden pallet will clear the floor. But there are models that can lift much higher and stacker models that can reach out to lift or set down a load. One model within this class is called a center control rider in which the operator's platform is between the motor and lifting mechanism. On these machines, the operator cannot walk but still has the convenience of easily stepping on and off the platform for frequent stops.
Can you guess what one of the more common injuries suffered by operators of motorized pallet jacks and walkie-type machines is? If you guessed crushed toes, you're right. Most modern machines are equipped with dead man controls while in the pedestrian mode, meaning if you let go of the control handle, the machine will stop, and the machines are engineered to provide a safe distance between the operator's feet and the wheels. But they can engineer out unsafe operations in which you try to stretch toward the machine while it is backing toward you, nor can the machine know if you're turning it directly toward your feet. The best rule of thumb for any pedestrian vehicle is to avoid backing up whenever possible. Some backing is necessary at times, but the majority of your travel should be in the forward position, so the machine is pulling away from you rather than running toward you. As in any other powered industrial truck, if your load is so high that you cannot see over it, you should operate in the reverse direction so you have a clear field of vision. You must be especially careful when operating this way to not crush yourself up against objects or walls, or to let the machine run up on you. Walkie riders may become unstable if they are operated at too high a speed. Always keep the load as low as practically possible, and slow down for turns. It may be tempting to try to increase your production by jumping off a walkie rider as you approach your destination while the machine is still moving, but don't do it. Wait until the machine has completely stopped. Many sprained ankles, painful falls, and other similar injuries are suffered by walkie rider operators jumping off their machines. Walkie riders should only be operated on smooth, relatively level floors, as you could lose your balance and fall if the truck is operated on rough or irregular surfaces. While we're talking about powered industrial trucks on which the operator stands, let's cover the two most common types, order pickers and reach trucks. Reach trucks are designed for lifting pallets out of storage racks, such as those found in the big box construction materials stores and in warehouses. In some cases, reach trucks have a very high lifting capacity. As is true for all powered industrial trucks, the higher the lift, the lower the safe weight capacity. The lift height to weight limit capacity will be on the machine's data plate and in the operator's manual. Some reach trucks have a mechanism called a pantograph, which extends the fork assembly out away from the lifting mast to reach into the racks. This is a handy feature for working with loads at high levels, but it also decreases the weight capacity of the machine and must be taken into account when determining the maximum weight the machine can handle. The information should be available on the data plate or ID plate of the machine. Reach trucks usually place the operator's station so the operator is facing up and down the aisles rather than facing the rack, as with a standard forklift. This is so the truck can be made as narrow as possible to fit into facilities whose storage racks are close together so the facility owner can maximize expensive warehouse storage space. Order pickers are similar to reach trucks in several aspects, and also similar to walkie riders in some respects. Reach trucks are used to pick up and pull down full pallets, while the operator stays in the ground-level operator station. In order pickers, the operator station raises and lowers with the forks, so the operator can pull from or add to items on pallets that are in elevated racks. The elevated operator feature adds one extremely important and obvious safety consideration to operation of order pickers, that of fall protection for the operator. Order pickers are manufactured with one or more anchor points so that a personal fall arrest system can be attached. This is not a fall prevention device, but a device that limits the distance you can fall. OSHA has specific requirements for fall protection systems and programs, and your worksite supervisor will review these with you at your work facility. The most basic safety rule is never, ever go up on an order picker platform unless your fall arrest system is properly and completely in place. Not even once, 
not even just a little bit off the floor. Safety waist belts are no longer permitted. You must wear a fall protection harness. This will prevent you from slipping out of your safety equipment if you fall. You must examine your fall protection harness, attachment devices such as lanyards, inertia reels, and any other part of the system before use each shift. The harness must be properly fitted and adjusted to fit you. The pallet that rides up with you will be even, or nearly so, with the operator's platform, and it may be tempting for you to step out onto the pallet and use it as an extension of the operator's platform. Even with a new, sturdy-looking pallet, this is a practice to avoid. Pallet boards are notorious for having unseen cracks, large knots on the underside that you cannot see, and other flaws that could cause the pallet to break if you step on it, causing you to fall. The most common type of powered industrial truck is the sit-down, counterbalanced forklift. It may be powered by gasoline, diesel fuel, propane, LPG, or electricity. One version of the common forklift is not a forklift at all and has no mast, forks, or other lifting machinery. This is called a tug, a tow, or industrial tractor and is used to pull carts, wheeled bins, and other non-motorized equipment. Numerous attachments are available for powered industrial trucks, usually forklifts, to accommodate specialized objects or products. The flooring industry, carpets, sheet vinyl, and linoleum commonly use pole trucks, which are forklift trucks that substitute a long, round steel pole for the two forks. This long pole is inserted into the hollow core around which carpet and sheet flooring is rolled for storage, to lift, transport, and set down the roll goods. A shorter pole is sometimes used in the paper industry in the same manner. Do you think adding another 12 feet of solid steel to the front of a forklift might bring about some operational changes from a standard forklift? How about balance? The weight of the steel pole plus a roll of flooring material dramatically changes the balance and therefore the stability and handling characteristics of the machine. What about maneuverability? With the pole out front, the overall length of the forklift is now tripled. Even if you thought you could turn on a dime with a standard forklift, a false and dangerous misconception, with a pole truck, you'll need much more room to make turns and especially to turn around. How about your depth perception? Operating a pole truck is a good test of depth perception. You've got to be able to see the spatial relationships of objects in your facility in relationship to the end of the pole. A lot of carpet warehouses have characteristic circular holes punched in the concrete block walls next to loading docks to attest to the apparent lack of depth perception of their pole truck operators. Some attachments can be added to forklifts that manipulate the forks. The ones you are most likely to encounter include the side shifter, which moves the forks back and forth horizontally, the rotator, which moves forks or a pole or other device around a circular axis, and fork positioners, which can move each fork independently, changing the overall spacing between the forks. Carton clamp trucks, also known as squeeze trucks, use a hydraulic mechanism in place of forks to grasp the load between two steel plates to grasp and lift the load. The steel plates have a rubber or other facing to provide friction so the load doesn't slip. The advantage to this type of materials handling system is that no pallets are needed, thus saving valuable cube height or space available inside of trucks and shipping containers. Also called squeeze trucks or just clamp trucks, these devices are often used in facilities where loads are sometimes in difficult to balance configurations, such as appliance warehouses. A load squeezed in this manner is much more stable than balanced, even bolted to a pallet. Specialized squeeze or clamp attachments are shaped in a circular configuration to fit drums of liquids or to fit rolls of paper. 
some attachments can lift, carry, and even turn drums up to pour out their contents. There are also attachments similar to squeeze or clamp truck attachments, which are intended to pick up bales of fibers, clothing, and similar materials, doing so by squeezing the bale between two arms. There are many variations of these type of attachments for handling specialized or particular materials or packages and perform certain operations with these materials. Most attachments add weight to the front of the powered industrial truck, which both decreases the available capacity for loads and changes the balance of the machine. Even attachments that may be lighter than the standard forks change the balance, and therefore the handling of the machine. Do not assume that when an attachment is lighter than standard forks, it permits heavier loads to be handled. OSHA requires that the weight of attachments be taken into account when determining a machine's capacity, and that this data be added to the information plate. Most clamp mechanisms and other attachments add additional hydraulic controls to the normal mast controls. Your worksite representative will demonstrate for you and train you on use of any additional control mechanisms if you are assigned to operate a machine equipped this way. The term capacity is used to describe the maximum load weight that a powered industrial truck can safely handle under varying circumstances. It is important for you to understand the circumstances that can change a truck's load weight capacity. If you don't, you risk overturn, sudden failure of the machine's lifting machinery, serious and expensive damage to the truck, and damage or destruction of the load you are trying to lift, or more importantly, serious injury to yourself. Do you know where to find the capacity of your powered industrial truck? Does it ever change? You need to know the answers to these questions in order to operate safely. A powered industrial truck's capacity can be found on the ID plate or nameplate. This is permanently mounted on your powered industrial truck, normally within the operator's view. How much weight can a 5,000-pound powered industrial truck lift safely? 5,000 pounds, right? Not necessarily. Many factors affect the safe lifting capacity of a powered industrial truck. The higher a load is lifted, the lower the capacity of the powered industrial truck. The ID plate or the operator's manual will specify the safe capacity of the truck at different heights. Another critical piece of information is the location of the load center on the forks. The capacity of a powered industrial truck is often noted with the load center being located about halfway between the front and back of the forks. For example, if you have four-foot forks on your powered industrial truck, the capacity is with load center at approximately two feet from the rear of the forks. Powered industrial truck stability is one of the most important concepts you will learn during this course especially regarding the operation of forklifts. To make sure we are all on the same page, we are going to start off with some OSHA definitions. Center of gravity is the point on an object at which all of the object's weight is concentrated. For symmetrical loads, the center of gravity is at the middle of the load. Counterweight is the weight that is built into the truck's basic structure and is used to offset the load's weight and to maximize the vehicle's resistance to tipping over. Lateral stability is a truck's resistance to overturning sideways. Line of action is an imaginary vertical line through an object's center of gravity. Load center is the horizontal distance from the load's edge or the forks or other attachments vertical face to the line of action through the load's center of gravity. Longitudinal stability is the truck's resistance to overturning forward or rearward. Track is the distance between the wheels on the same axle of the truck. Wheelbase is the distance between the center line of the vehicle's front and rear wheels. A powered industrial truck's stability is influenced by several factors, including, but not limited to, its wheelbase, track, height, and the location of its counterweight. 
the load center influences stability as well. An easy way to explain longitudinal stability is to use the seesaw or teeter-totter example. Imagine your powered industrial truck as a teeter-totter with wheels. The powered industrial truck's front axle serves as the center of the teeter-totter. The counterweight is the weight on one end and the load is the weight on the other end. The purpose of the powered industrial truck's counterweight is to keep the teeter from tottering. The weight that goes on the other end, the load, is limited by the powered industrial truck's capacity chart so that all four wheels stay on the ground. Since you steer with the rear axle, this is especially important. Other factors that influence both longitudinal and lateral stability are the location of the load center on the forks, the height of the load, and the degree and direction of the lean of the truck when operated on a surface that is not level. The stability triangle is another way of communicating the concept of stability. Imagine that the two front wheels of the powered industrial truck make up two points of the triangle. Then imagine the center of the rear axle makes the third point of the triangle. The goal is to keep the powered industrial truck's center of gravity within this triangle. The farther that the load center is located from the rear of the forks, the closer the center of gravity is to crossing the line between the wheels of the front axle. The higher you elevate a load from the working surface, the closer the center of gravity is to that same line. If driving on a working surface that is not level, the center of gravity moves toward the low end of the slope. This is why grades in excess of 10% must be traveled with the load upgrade. Can you think of anything else that might cause the center of gravity to shift? How about the influence of dynamic forces created when a powered industrial truck moves, stops, or turns? How about when a load is raised or lowered? Correct. All of these affect your powered industrial truck's center of gravity and therefore affect its stability. By now you realize that your powered industrial truck is not exactly a Sherman tank and it's not as simple as it may first appear. Your powered industrial truck is limited by its capacity, stability, and by the speed at which it can be operated. The operator's manual and the client representative at your worksite will be able to give you more specific information regarding operating limitations. There are certain OSHA requirements for all powered industrial truck operators. These requirements have been set in place by OSHA in order to keep you and your coworkers safe. There are many requirements, so we will break them down into parts to make it easier to understand and remember. Part 1. General Powered Industrial Truck Operations The first thing to remember when operating a powered industrial truck is to always wear your seatbelt. Just as seatbelts save lives in automobiles, they also save the lives of powered industrial truck operators. Never attempt to modify or remove a seatbelt. As a powered industrial truck operator, you are expected to maintain control of your powered industrial truck at all times. Never drive up to a person standing in front of a fixed object, such as a bench, and never allow anyone to pass under the elevated portion of your powered industrial truck, whether it's loaded or not. Sometime during your career as a powered industrial truck operator, a coworker probably asked to hitch a ride on your powered industrial truck. Ronstad specifically prohibits this for all powered industrial truck operators. If you are caught giving someone a ride, you could subject Ronstad and our client to thousands of dollars in OSHA fines, or even worse, maim or kill someone. It's simply not worth the risk, so don't do it. While operating your powered industrial truck, keep your arms, legs, and head inside the running lines of the truck. Severe powered industrial truck injuries can occur when operators get their hands and feet caught between their powered industrial truck and another object, such as a storage rack a wall, or even another powered industrial truck. According to OSHA, 
a powered industrial truck is unattended when the operator is 25 feet or more away from the truck, which remains in view, or whenever the operator leaves the truck and it is not in view, regardless of distance. Whenever you leave your powered industrial truck unattended for any length of time, you must lower the forks or attachment to the ground, ensure the controls are in neutral, shut off the power, and set the brake. If you are parking on an incline, be sure to block the wheels. If you dismount the truck and remain within 25 feet of it while it is still in your view, you must lower the forks or attachment to the ground, ensure the controls are in neutral, and set the brake to prevent any movement. Remember to never block access to exit doors, fire aisles, stairways, electrical panels, or fire equipment. While operating a forklift, be sure to maintain sufficient headroom under overhead installations, such as lights, pipes, sprinklers, overhead doors, etc. Some workplaces have areas with potentially hazardous concentrations of materials in the air that could explode or flash into fire. For example, a plant that spray paints large parts in a spray booth and uses powered industrial trucks to enter the booth to place and remove the parts for painting. The paint vapor in the booth may be at hazardous levels. Some other potentially hazardous areas include areas with metal dusts in the air, areas with solvents or gases in the air. Even finely ground sugar and cake flour can be combustible or explosive under the right conditions. Specially equipped powered industrial trucks are available to safely work in these environments. OSHA specifies that these trucks be labeled according to the type of fuels used and the level of special safety equipment they carry. For example, an ordinary electric powered forklift is labeled Type E. A forklift that has some additional safeguards is labeled Type ES. Electric forklifts equipped for the most hazardous locations are labeled type EE and EX. The same is true for other types of fuels for powered industrial trucks. If you are assigned to work at a facility with this type of hazardous location, you will receive specific training regarding the facility and the powered industrial truck or trucks you will be operating. For your protection, Use a load backrest extension whenever you are working with a load that could fall backward onto you. A forklift is equipped with an overhead guard to protect you from falling objects, but it is only meant to protect you from the impact of small packages, boxes, etc. It is not meant to withstand the impact of a falling full capacity load. Now let's talk about part two, powered industrial truck travel requirements. While traveling, an operator is expected to observe all traffic regulations, including the plant speed limit, and must yield the right of way to emergency vehicles such as ambulances and fire trucks. The higher a load is lifted, the more stability you lose, so when traveling, load should be lifted only the minimum amount necessary to clear the floor. As the operator, you are responsible for keeping your powered industrial truck under control at all times. Maintain a safe distance of at least three truck lengths behind another powered industrial truck. Do not pass other powered industrial trucks traveling in the same direction at intersections, blind spots, or any other dangerous location. When approaching locations where vision is obstructed, such as intersections, you must slow down and sound your horn. Do not proceed unless you are sure it is safe to do so. You must always maintain a clear view of the path of travel. If a load is so tall that it blocks your view while traveling in the forward direction, you must travel with the load behind you so that you maintain a clear view of the path of travel. If you are working in a facility that has inclines or grades, you must travel them slowly. If it is more than a 10% grade, you must travel with the load facing uphill. A 10% grade is a slope that changes 10 feet in elevation for every 100 feet of horizontal distance. When traveling on grades, tilt the load back and raise it only as far as necessary to clear the road surface. 
always operate your powered industrial truck at a speed that will allow you to stop safely. Remember to slow down when floors are wet or slippery. Never engage in horseplay or stunts while operating a powered industrial truck. The combined weight of a powered industrial truck and its load can be enormous. Many cargo elevators have enough space to contain a truck and its load, but are not rated for such a heavy load. Never enter an elevator with your powered industrial truck unless your worksite representative has specifically instructed you it is safe to do so. Also, do not assume that if one of your worksite's elevators is safe for powered industrial trucks, all of them are. If your workplace has elevators, remember to approach them slowly. When entering an elevator, wait until the elevator car is level with the floor, and then enter squarely. Once in the elevator, be sure and put the controls in neutral, shut off the power, and set the brake to prevent movement. If your facility has railroad operations, always cross railroad tracks diagonally and never park closer than eight feet from the center of the tracks. While traveling, avoid running over loose objects or debris. Execute turns at a safe speed and turn the steering wheel in a smooth, sweeping motion. Except when maneuvering at a very low speed, the steering wheel must be turned at a moderate, even rate. Now that we have dealt with general powered industrial truck operation and travel, it's time to address load handling. Prior to handling a load, ensure it is within the rated capacity of a powered industrial truck. This can be done by utilizing the information on the ID plate. Make sure that the load is arranged so that it is safe and stable. To ensure stability of the load, place the forks as far under the load as possible and carefully tilt the mast backward if using a forklift. Use caution when handling loads that cannot be centered. Adjust loads that are long or high and may affect capacity, such as multiple pallets. When operating a forklift, use extreme care when tilting a load forward or backward, especially when stacking. When stacking, use only the amount of backward tilt needed to stabilize the load. Never tilt an elevated load forward unless you are in position to place it on a rack or on a stack. The only other time you are allowed to tilt elevated forks forward is when it is necessary in order to pick up a load. Powered industrial trucks that are equipped with attachments must be operated as if partially loaded even when they are not handling a load. Part 4 focuses briefly on the use of dock boards and bridge plates. These are used to bridge the gap between the workplace's working surface and the working surface of a truck, trailer, or rail car. If they buckle or slip, you can find yourself in a world of hurt. When using portable dock boards, make sure they are secured in place by an anchor of some sort or by being equipped with a device that will prevent them from slipping. Portable dock boards must have handles or some other effective means that allows safe handling. Once dock boards or bridge plates are secured, they must be driven over slowly and with care. Never exceed their rated capacity. When operating in rail cars, ensure there is positive protection in place to keep the rail car from moving while dock boards or bridge plates are in place. Part 5 looks at working in and around highway trucks, trailers, and railroad cars. Grave injuries can occur if a vehicle moves while the powered industrial truck is entering or exiting it. These incidents can even be fatal. To prevent this, the following measures have been required by OSHA. As the operator, prior to entry, it is your responsibility to ensure that brakes have been set and wheel blocks are in place to prevent movement of trucks, trailers, and rail cars while loading or unloading. Also, examine the flooring of trucks, trailers, and railroad cars for brakes and other signs of weakness before driving onto them. Always maintain a safe distance from the edge of ramps or platforms while on any elevated dock, platform, or rail car to avoid falling off. 
Never use a forklift to open or close freight doors. A highway truck must have its brakes set and wheel chocks placed under the rear wheels in order to keep it from rolling when it's being boarded by a powered industrial truck. When uncoupled from a highway truck, a trailer may require fixed jacks to prevent upending during loading or unloading operations. Proper maintenance is critical to safe powered industrial truck operation. Part 6 explores inspection and maintenance responsibilities of powered industrial truck operators. Powered industrial trucks must be inspected prior to being put into service. Inspections must take place at least once a day. For facilities that operate 24 hours a day, this inspection must take place at the end of every shift. If any defects are found that affect the safe operation of the powered industrial truck, it must be taken out of service immediately and remain out of service until the defects have been corrected. Part of this inspection includes ensuring that all ID plates and markings are in place and legible. Any necessary maintenance must be performed only by authorized personnel. If while operating your powered industrial truck, you find any part of it to be in excess of its normal operating temperature, it must be taken out of service until the cause of the overheating has been found and corrected. Powered industrial trucks must be kept clean and free of lint, excess oil, and grease. If a thorough cleaning is required, non-combustible cleaning agents should be used. Part 7 we will discuss refueling and battery charging operations. Note that we will only cover general OSHA requirements. Specific procedures will be discussed during your worksite training and orientation. This information can also be found in the operator's manual for your powered industrial truck. OSHA mandates that the storage and handling of liquid fuels, such as gasoline and diesel fuel, be in accordance with the National Fire Protection Association, also known as NFPA, Flammable and Combustible Liquids Code. The storage and handling of liquefied petroleum gas fuel be in accordance with NFPA storage and handling of liquefied petroleum gases. Remember to never use open flames, such as a match or a lighter, to check the level of gasoline in a fuel tank or the level of electrolyte in a battery. Smoking is prohibited in refueling and battery recharging areas. Vapors from gasoline and electrolyte are flammable. Be sure your powered industrial truck is properly positioned, the engine is off, and the brakes set prior to refueling or recharging operations. Take all appropriate measures to prevent spills during refueling operations. However, if a spill does occur, spilled oil or fuel must be carefully washed away or evaporated and the fuel tank cap replaced prior to starting the engine. If a leak is detected in the fuel system, the powered industrial truck must not be operated until it is corrected. A large or uncontrolled spill of fuel is an immediate emergency that you should not try to handle by yourself. Notify others in the area and your supervisor immediately if this should happen. All forms of fuel store amounts of energy that can injure you. You can suffer painful, serious injuries or be killed if you do not handle fuels, including battery fluids, with the respect and caution they deserve. If your powered industrial truck is refueled from portable cans, liquid fuels such as gasoline and diesel fuel should be handled and dispensed only from metallic containers. The best type is called a safety can and will have Underwriters Laboratory or Factory Mutual Organization labeling on it. Battery electrolyte is an acid that can burn your skin and cause immediate damage to your eyes if it is splashed into them. When handling battery electrolyte, always wear at least a face shield to protect your eyes and face from splashes and gloves with long cuffs called gauntlets to protect your hands and forearms. Aprons are a good idea also. If battery acid is splashed onto your clothes, you should change immediately and rinse your skin with running clear water. 
Gloves and aprons for handling battery acid should be impermeable and have the look of rubber, although it may be of some other material. There should be an emergency eyewash station near the battery handling station, and you should become familiar with its use. As we mentioned before, liquefied petroleum gas is also known by several other names, including LP gas, LPG, and propane. It is one of the most common fuels used in powered industrial trucks. The gas is held in special pressure tanks, known as bottles or cylinders, latched securely to the exterior of powered industrial trucks. There are two methods of refueling, removing the empty cylinder and replacing it with a full one, and refueling the empty cylinder on the truck from a bulk tank at the worksite. Your worksite representative will train you in the type of refueling that is done at your facility and give you detailed instructions on this important but potentially dangerous operation. Liquefied petroleum gas is manufactured by pressurizing the gas to the point that it becomes liquid. This allows the storage of much greater quantities of the material in the cylinders. It remains liquid so long as there is pressure on it, but it always wants to turn back into a gas. As soon as pressure is released, it immediately flashes into a gas, drawing great amounts of heat from, freezing, anything it touches, including your skin and especially your eyes. Flash freeze burns to the skin are extremely painful and slow to heal because of deep damage to your skin. Gauntlet-type gloves should be worn whenever you refuel your LPG-powered truck. The glove should have a double layer, an impermeable exterior surface that looks like rubber, which will keep the liquid from penetrating to your skin, and an interior lining of cotton, canvas, or similar material to provide some insulation from escaping frigid gas. Should you be struck in the eye by escaping LPG, the news is even worse. The delicate, moist outer surfaces of the eyeball are immediately frozen solid, and if the exposure to the gas is extended for even a short period, your entire eyeball can be frozen. The eye's outer surfaces have a low blood flow, so healing, if there is any, can be very slow. It is a very painful injury and usually results in at least some loss of sight. It is also easily avoided. Full face shields should always be worn during LPG refueling operations. Remember that some LPG always escapes and turns to gas every single time you refuel a powered industrial truck. It is usually a small puff that you may only hear or that may make a small cloud of white vapor as the liquid flashes to gas. Even this little puff can injure you. However, if you forget to shut off a valve or something goes wrong, you could be blasted by a high pressure stream of liquid quickly turning to frigid gas. Many operators become complacent in refueling with LPG. They have learned how to position their hands to avoid the puff of LPG that escapes as hoses are attached and removed. Putting on the gloves and the face shield takes time. They think personal protective equipment is bulky and uncomfortable, so they stop using the personal protective equipment. They have gotten away with it dozens, hundreds, maybe even thousands of times. But remember that even if you get away with it a thousand times, the one time you don't get away with it will cost you a very painful freeze burn with a long recovery. It could cost you your sight. Some facilities change out batteries frequently, charging them outside of the powered industrial truck. Heavy-duty lifting devices are utilized for handling the very heavy batteries, and specific lifting procedures need to be used. If you are to be involved in this kind of operation, your worksite representative will go over the steps you must follow for this procedure. Most facilities simply plug in the powered industrial trucks for recharging at the end of the day. When charging batteries, be sure to take precautions to prevent open flames, sparks, or electrical arcs in the area. Keep tools and other metallic objects away from the top of an uncovered battery. If needed, always add acid to water in a battery. 
adding water to acid may result in a violent chemical reaction. Battery maintenance can be a complex technical topic, and unless you are specifically trained by your site representative to do so, do not attempt to add either acid or water to a battery. We'll end this section with one last tip that's not necessarily an OSHA requirement, but rather an industry best practice. When mounting or dismounting your powered industrial truck, always maintain three points of contact with the truck. Keep either two hands and one foot or two feet and one hand in contact with the truck at all times. Doing this will help to prevent painful injuries from falls. In this video, we have discussed truck-related topics and OSHA requirements. The information we did not cover will be covered at your worksite. The purpose of this training is to empower you with the knowledge and skills necessary to prevent incidents, and in doing so, to keep you and your coworkers safe. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask your site representative or your Ronstadt supervisor. Thank you for your time. We wish you much success and safety in your role as a powered industrial truck operator.